You're listening to another ambitious entrepreneur network.com podcast, the voice for entrepreneurs and small business. Now onto the show. Welcome to the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast, daily conversations with Christian entrepreneurs to inspire and empower Christian business owners to walk strongly in their faith while build a thriving business that honors him in every way. Now over to your host. And Marie Cross. And welcome to another episode of the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast. This is episode 148, and I'm your host, Anne Marie Cross, the podcasting queen. Now, my guest today says God does not abandon you and he doesn't set you up for failure. It is in overcoming the obstacles where you grow the deepest in your relationship with Christ. Joining me on today's show is Carla Webb. Carla is a certified Christian life coach. She helps women not satisfied with their lives anticipate what they could become, helps them overcome self-defeating habits or insecurities, manage relationships and guides them on their spiritual journeys, inspiring women to live the life that they were meant to live. Now on today's show, Carla's going to share there's no such thing as overnight success. She's also going to talk about even though that you are a Christian and you want to reach the church, while some of those doors don't open to you, don't give up. And she's also going to talk about how God is good and he is faithful. God does not abandon you. And again, he doesn't set you up for failure. So welcome to the show, Carla. Thank you. I am so excited to be here. This is such a great topic because so many uh, business owners that I speak to have a false assumption that business is easy. And as soon as we hang the sign out on the door or we put up our you know, Facebook page, whatever it might be, that we're going to get a steady stream of income. And uh, we can often get disillusioned when we don't get a flood of clients uh, wanting to work with us. But first, before we dive into that, share a little bit about how you transitioned into becoming a certified Christian life coach. Was it something that you heard about, dreamed about? How did that all happen for you? Well, I spent 18 years uh, in public education. I was a music teacher for 18 years. And then I've also been in ministry as a worship minister within the church and was on staff at a couple of different churches. And I just felt God leading me in a different direction to be in education in a different realm. Uh, beyond middle school. I taught middle schoolers for 18 years. And I just felt like that God was was taking me to, to another place in my life and that it was time to move on from the public education. And uh, I still, I have, I always felt like called into ministry. And I always envisioned that that would be, you know, as a worship minister or on staff at a church. Um, but um, about eight years ago, I I left my, an, an abusive marriage, and that set me on the path to really be an advocate for um, domestic violence awareness mm. and helping other women who have who have gone through that on the. And so, as I, you know, I'm eight years out now, and as I have uh, healed, you know, been in the healing process of all of that. And um, really studying about relationships and what is a healthy relationship, it just led me into the direction of coaching. And um, I have found it to be so rewarding and so fulfilling to be able, because in, in my opinion, there are, there are three levels. And it is you start out as that victim mm -hmm. and you, you finally identify as a victim, which is really hard. And then once you do that, you go into that survivor mode. Like I am now a survivor. Mm. And then there, in my opinion, comes that last process, which is where you step into the new section of your life, which is I'm an overcomer. Yes. And that's where I feel like I can, I step in and people can partner with me is when they're ready for that overcomer phase of their life. And I feel like with my experience coming out of that abusive relationship, which was a 17 year long relationship, 
um, I, I have a good understanding as to where that, that victim and survivor is coming from in wanting to rebuild their life and what their future can look like. Yeah, I love that. And I would, uh, you know, certainly give you an opportunity to speak more into that, because I think, you know, in the church, when we're t- talking about a husband and wife relationship, we would expect or assume that both parties are loving. And uh, as we know, Christ just so loved the church, he gave his life. And so there may just be other women and men even who are experiencing some kind of abuse. So I'd love for you to speak into that too. Let's talk about first something that you've said, and we started off the show in this. There's no such thing as overnight success. What insights have you learned as you're building your business that you know has been really helpful for you looking back that you know is going to be an incredible lesson and insight for those who may be struggling with some of the things that, as I said, that their business is not growing as quickly or as strongly as they would have hoped? Yeah, I, I was listening to some other uh, of your podcasts uh, this morning, actually, and another one of the people um, that you interviewed touched on this is that we assume that since we are Christians and we are doing what we feel like God has called us to do and that our steps are ordered, that it's just going to be a matter of, you know, taking putting one foot in front of the other and it's all going to fall in line. Um, and that does, that isn't necessarily the case. It is, and, and it truly brings us to a point of um, understanding that everything is in God's timing and that we have to be fully equipped and fully prepared to walk in that, you know, walk through that door as he opens them. But those doors are going to be opened on, on his timetable. And sometimes uh, we get so frustrated because we feel like we are ready and that we are, you know, let's just jump in with both feet. Um, But God knows us better than what we know ourselves. And whenever we're able to uh, be a further down the road and those successes do start happening and we look back, we understand that we probably weren't truly prepared to to handle uh, all that God had, you know, for us. And so, you know, God is, is so um, gracious in that he gives us what we can handle at the time. And when we're ready for more, he will give us more. And, you know, being an entrepreneur, there's, there are all different kinds of learning curves. And so as we, as we learn more, then, uh, then God will open up more. And um, so, you know, you talked, you touched on patient on patience. Don't pray for it. <laughs> Because uh, we'll find you'll find out what it is, yeah. but it's just being. Um, I think another part of it is just being secure, even whenever it doesn't look like it's panning out. Mm-hmm. Do you trust and believe that this is what God has called you to? Because if you're ready to just, you know, well, I've been I've been doing this for six months now, and and nothing has happened. Um, you know, are you in it for the long haul, or? are you going to give up and move on to something else? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, Last year, actually the beginning of this year, I went to an event. It was a two-day event for Christian business owners by a gentleman named Wes Holm. And he was saying that when people want to build a successful business, a kingdom business that um, really does honour him uh, in all ways, and sometimes for some of us, we are looking at 10 years, he said. And if you're not willing to put that in, especially the key foundations, and I love the way that you've reminded us that sometimes in instances where success comes too quickly, we haven't built the foundations, the team members, the resources, if we're selling products as well, that will enable us to fulfill those, you know, the deluge of orders. So rather you have some teething, um, and I can't think of the term because I don't have babies anymore, but, you know, teething opportunities and, and, and maybe some Mm -hmm. smaller failures than big ones where, you know, sometimes we hear of those businesses that grow too quickly and unfortunately they're just not able to come back because of the the impact Mm -hmm. impact on their brands. Let's talk about even though you are a Christian and want to reach the church, while some of those doors don't open to you uh, immediately, don't give up. Is that something that you've experienced yourself? Yes, it it is something that I have personally experienced because um, especially whenever I was um, 
really wanting to speak about what are, uh, what are healthy relationships within, within a Christian marriage, what is a toxic relationship, and then what falls in that abusive category. Um, you know, I have, I, unfortunately, what I found is that the church just really does not want to address that. Um, I have on many different occasions been told, uh, we're not going to let you come talk about that because it opens up that can of worms, you know, so to speak. And so I was just going to say, Carla, mm -hmm. maybe doesn't want to talk about it. They don't know how to talk about it. Like you say, right. can of worms. Sorry, over to you. Oh, you're right. You know, it's that can of worms. And so what happens if we have people that come forward and say this, you know, they they recognize those warning signs and they say this is happening to me The they the church, um, you know, the pastors, they they aren't equipped to handle what, what is coming at, you know, what's that information mm -hmm. and um it, a lot of times the, the first response is, well, well, God hates divorce. God hates divorce. So we have to avoid divorce at all costs. Well, I hate divorce. I think divorce is terrible and I hated going through it. Unfortunately, that is what had to happen in, in my case because I was in an abusive, abusive marriage. And um, so it's not advocating for divorce. It's advocating for not abuse and for to have healthy relationships and to identify what that is and um and and not and not um keeping people tied into relationships that are just not uh, not healthy they're not good and do some serious damage to everyone involved yeah so agree and i think that it, it's wonderful that uh, people such as yourself as you said you've gone through those three different areas from you know victim through to survivor through to now overcomer and now you're able to share that message give some insights and obviously work uh with people who are experiencing similar things that you've gone through and i think mm -hmm. by sweeping things under the carpet and, and we're not i'm not judging here and i know you're not judging here either mm -hmm. but by not having the conversation I think is just doing people such an injustice and we're better or we're best to go than like-minded brothers and sisters so that we can look at it from the biblical point of view and I'm sure mm -hmm. that you try to do as much as you can from that biblical point of view trying to heal that relationship change certain behaviors yet when you come to that time where the other party is just not willing to do that, then a decision needs to be made because I'm sure mm -hmm. God does not want anyone to be in a relationship where either of the parties is um, their safety, uh, mentally, physically, spiritually, all of that is being jeopardized. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone that can recognize, I'm going to open the floor to you. What are some key things yeah. that you want to share with someone today, a message that so that they can see um, some of the warning signs perhaps and then some of the steps on what they can can do uh, and then of course at the end of the show we'll share how people can get in contact with you to find mm -hmm. out more information but what are some of the warning signs uh sure some of the the very beginning worship uh, worship warning signs are uh, what they call like love bombing so if you feel like you're just being blitzed almost with they're very charming and they are uh just showering you with all of this uh, love and praise and maybe gifts and they want to spend every moment with you and it really seems to be kind of this whirlwind romance where you're just kind of taken aback like oh my gosh they love me so much and they they you know think I'm so special and and unique and so you really get this you know feeling of like I am something you know this is something special and then uh, you know you'll start noticing that um, then they start trying to isolate you maybe from friends and family because maybe then friends and family, they feel, they feel left out and your, your girlfriend starts saying, you know, we never see you anymore. Let's have a girl's night out. Or your family says, you know, we'd like for you to come over for dinner. We haven't seen you in a long time. And then, and then that you get pushed back. And they and um, they don't want you to go out with your girls, you know, with your girlfriends or go spend time with your family. 
because uh, that's one of the very first things they do is they try to isolate you from your friends and family. And then let's say you say, well, I am going to go out with my friends and because I haven't seen them in a long time. Then maybe they are constantly text messaging you or maybe they're being a accusing you of like, who are you talking to? You know, who are you flirting with? And so maybe they get very accusatory. Um, another thing is that whenever your friends and family do start making comments about how maybe I don't like how, I don't like how they're talking to you. I don't like how they treat you. Then it will get turned into, well, they, maybe your friends are just jealous. They're jealous that you have someone and they don't. Or in terms of your family, they may say things like, well, your family doesn't like that. They're trying to control you and they don't like that you're trying, that you're being independent and that you're in this relationship with me and making your own decisions. Mm -hmm. When in reality, you're not, you know, they are the one that's trying to control you and they are the one that are making your decisions for you, but they flip it and turn it on it's the other people that are doing that to you and and when in reality it's your it's them who's doing it to you yeah absolutely. so those those are some really early warning signs yeah and i'd imagine you know sometimes um when you see some of those warning signs uh maybe even early on in the relationship because obviously if you're married already and then you can really start to see i mean uh, obviously for the time of the show we certainly don't and we would definitely going to talk about how you can connect with Carla and please reach out to her because we're only just scratching the surface but if you look back to maybe when you were dating were some of these warning signs creeping through already at that stage oh yes absolutely I just didn't know what they I just didn't know what they were uh, I didn't know how to recognize recognize them and uh, you know another aspect of where especially in a what you feel like is a Christian relationship um, he really played on my desire to serve God because uh, one of the things that uh, he said early on in our relationship was that, you know, he had prayed that God would send him a, a Christian girl to help him, uh, you know, be a better man, to be the person that he knew that he wasn't. And then so then God sent me and I was the answer to the prayer. Mm -hmm. And so then whenever I would start trying to like back out of the relationship, well, not only was I giving up on him and giving up on our relationship, but I was going against God because God is the one who brought us together and that I just needed to be a better partner. And I needed to stick with him as he was going through, you know, this growing process of discovering, you know, his relationship with God and that. And so really, you know, the kind of the pressure was put on me to stand by my man, you know, as he was trying to become this better person and, and kept falling off the wagon, you know, so to speak. And then whenever I would say, you know, i you know, this isn't, I didn't sign up for this. Oh, well, you know, don't give up on me and, you know, hang in there with me. God's still working on me. Mm -hmm. And so then it really put a lot of pressure on me to stick in, you know, stay in that relationship. Yeah. And what I'm hearing um, you say constantly through that, the language is very manip manipulative, isn't it? As you said, oh, yeah. And twisted in such a way that it makes you feel guilty or that it's your pressure. And, you know, any relationship, even if it's a, a friend on friend, if someone is relying on you or leaning so much on you and your behavior to change them, that should be a red flag for everyone, shouldn't it? Particularly if a, a potential spouse, um, because as we know, they need to sort themselves out first, their relationship with God, strengthen through him. And then when you're ready, then you can unite, you know, as one, as, as man and, and woman. And so let's talk about God is good and faithful. And the reason I want you mm -hmm. to do that is, is because obviously there is a lot of healing. There is a lot of work. And sometimes what happens is people may not step forward and say something because of the potential shame that they may be feeling, mm -hmm. that it is their fault. Because it sounds to me like they're, they're under a lot of guilt and pressure anyway from their partner. And I know that in some instances, some men may be experiencing this. So it's both men and women. Mm -hmm. 
yet you know we do have such a good good god looking back now um he would have healed you he would have i'm sure share more about where you are now mm -hmm. today having gone through of course the divorce but knowing that God is good, yes? A absolutely. You know, whenever I first started this journey and whenever I was really just looking at to it as a ministry, um, the John 4.10, which is the story of the woman at the well, uh, I've heard, I grew up in church, so I've heard that story possibly hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. But whenever I was on the other side of that, when I read John 4, 10, where Jesus says to the woman at the well, if you only knew, and that's what, that's what I actually named my ministry was if you only knew, because he says, if you only knew who I am, meaning Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you know, if you only knew who I am and the gift that God has for you. Mm -hmm. You would ask me for a drink of living water. And, and that's the thing is that um, I just encourage women in particular and anybody to seek and who, is, who God is mm -hmm. and the gift that he has for each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And that with, we will um, accept that gift that he will, we will be able to drink from that living water that never runs dry, that well, we will feel refreshed and rejuvenated and filled and, and not thirsty anymore once we really tap into that well of living water. And so God is good and he is faithful. And whenever I got on the other side of this, um, I really dug in and said, you know, I want to learn every lesson that God has for me, because that's where I feel like the patterns are repeated. We repeat the, we repeat the pattern of the lesson that we did not learn. Mm -hmm. And so it has to keep being brought around to us until we learn the lesson. And so whenever, if we find ourselves in a place where we say, why does this keep happening to me? Or why do I keep detracting the same person? I feel like I'm going out on a different date with the same guy, you know, over and over again. It's because you're not learning the lesson mm -hmm. and you really need to understand what, what God is trying to teach you. And if you will pay attention, he is good and he is faithful and he will teach you what that lesson is. Yeah. I could not uh, agree with you more wholeheartedly through lessons in my own life. And it's all around an identity, isn't it? And often what we do in our friendships, in our partnerships, whether it be in business, whether it be with husband or, or wife, we often look for the other person or it's something external to fulfill a need in us that is missing or that maybe mm -hmm. wasn't nurtured as a child and what you've just reminded us of is that what we are seeking that longing that yearning in our heart no one nothing no amount of wealth not amount amount of success or significance mm -hmm. can ever fulfill that to the point as you said that it is sustaining it is long lasting it will get you through every up you know ups and downs other than jesus as, and he referred mm -hmm. to that as living water so i think and what I use this, um, this example is anytime something has come around again, I thought, this, is, this feels familiar. What is it mm -hmm. that I need to learn? We take it to prayer. We dive deep into the Bible and read some verses. And as you say, in that stillness, we can often then learn the biggest lesson, the greatest lesson that strengthens that gap, that need and fulfills us um, beyond. It has been such a, an incredible opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you for your courage. What would you say to someone that can recognize that he or she, let's talk she, because I know you work mm -hmm. a lot with women, that she is, has been struggling with this. What would you say to her? And then how can she get in contact with you to find out more information? Sure. Well, the first thing that I would do is, you know, a lot of times women reach out to me when they are in a time of crisis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I'm, and I will, and I'm happy to be there and so, and to offer love and support, but I am not a crisis interventionist. You know, I, um, that is not what I am trained in and that's not what my specialty is. And so then I always get them connected, um, with, if they're local, then I get them contacted with the local domestic violence, um, shelter and, um, ab, you know, advocacy program and get them connected with an advocate. 
uh, because that's really the first step is getting connected with especially your local organization that can help you in that crisis time of crisis. And if you don't have a local organization, then the National Domestic Violence Hotline, uh, which is thehotline.org, um, you can get on there and they have a 1-800 number. So that's you know step number one is if you are in a crisis situation. The next step is if you have gotten through that crisis situation to get to find a very good counselor mm. to, because I counseling has been uh, an integral part in my healing process. Mm. And so counseling is essential. And then where I come in is in that, oh, where you're ready, you know, you, you've gone through a lot of that healing process and you are ready to set your new path. And it's like, what are the possibilities? What can my new life look like? And so that's where I come in, in the coaching part of, but, I, but it's really important to do the work. Uh, up to that point to where you're wet, ready to receive me and to, ready to be coached and uh, start taking that next step in creating that life that you were meant to live because you weren't meant to live in that in, in that abusive situation or in that toxic relationship you were meant to for so much more. That's not ever what God intended for you. So uh, whenever, you know, reach out, I'm that when you're ready to live the life you were meant to live and do and do the hard work because it is hard work. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, like I said, God is good and he is faithful. And um, if we seek him, we will find and he will guide our steps. Yeah. And uh, Carla, of course, you are a living testament to having gone through that process and at the other end, and just the smile on your face, I can really see that um, <laughs> it's impacted your life. And now, of course, you you certainly want to help uh, impact the lives of others too. And Absolutely. I, I think, you know, we, we've got great resources that we can find online um, and do that in a private, you know, setting if we need to, to be able to, to reach out to people. But I think it's a conversation that needs to be had. And I think it's certainly a conversation that um, needs to be had from a church point of view too. And if, as we say, if there are the, the pastors or there are no staff there that are able to support in that area, that's where it's important to reach out to people in the community who certainly can, because I think um, you just need to hear, and which on our TV here in, in Australia, where we hear about men and women and children, unfortunately, being mm -hmm. abused and if that's happening in the church, we need to have the support system there to be able to heal all parties if possible, but certainly um, not talking about it is, is not healing and not giving opportunities for people to uh, to be able to move and work through that. So thank you for coming on the show. One of the things I do for all of my guests, Hello, is to uh, say a word of prayer before we finish the show. May I do that for you today? I would love it. And may I tell you about one thing that I have coming up that oh, your viewers oh, might be interested in? Yeah, starting in July, I am doing an online program and it's going to be through Facebook Live. So anybody can do it. And it is a four week program starting July 10th called I Am Worth It. And it is going to be on Tuesday evenings uh, starting July 10th. And it will be the next four uh, Tuesday evenings in July. And it's about overcoming those self-defeating habits and insecurities and deciding that I am worth it. And so you can uh, register for that at CarlaWeb.org, CarlaWeb.org. And of course, that's how they can get in contact with me for any other resources they might need. Fantastic. And we'll put all of those links in the show notes, ambitiousentrepreneurnetwork.com forward slash TCE148. And uh, when I tag you in this Facebook uh, live, Carla, we'll also, um, we'll tag you maybe in your page or so, or you can leave that in the comments. So people can click straight through there and find yeah. out more information. All right, let's uh, let's say a word of uh, thanks. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to speak with Carla today. And Father, we just want to say thank you for supporting Carla, for healing her, for reminding her how much she is loved. And now through your healing and support, she's now able to go forward in her business and help other women who have 
gone through being victim, gone through to being overcomer, and now really um, living that life in the life that you have destined them to, uh, to have. Father, we just want to pray for people who are watching or listening today or who may know someone who is experiencing um, relationships, Lord, that are, that are not healthy and that are toxic. Father, we just want to pray in the name of Jesus that your love, the Holy Spirit, will work in them and through them that they can heal individually but then together to come through. And sometimes, Lord, it needs external support. And so we just really pray that today's message has given someone hope. Um, that there is a possibility. There's no shame in that, but there is healing. But of course, that there are steps that needs to go through. So we just want to uphold the work that Carla is doing up in prayer. Um, can you to bless her work? And uh, we just thank you, Lord, for this time together. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so thank much. You this has been Carla. such a blessing. Such important uh, conversation. And uh, thank you for being courageous and uh, sharing this message it's a very important one so thanks again for coming on the show thank you you've been listening to the christian entrepreneurs podcast brought to you by be the difference movement.com changing the world one message at a time do you feel called to influence real change with your message join our supportive community of like-minded influencers thought leaders and disruptors at www dot be the difference movement dot com that's be the difference movement dot com